What it do, Dream Team? It's your boy D Neil back with another reaction video. We got Mason Cox, who is an AFL player. The video is Don't Believe in Never. Before we jump into this, guys, make sure you subscribe to the channel, ring the notification bell, give the video a thumbs up so it gets suggested. Social media, Patreon, all up top. You can subscribe to any of it, follow the links in the description. All you gotta do is hit the link, follow me, talk to me. I'm human. I talk back. If you got a favorite video suggestion, you can subscribe to Patreon or in the description section there's a Google form link. What we got, Mason? When Mason came to us, no American player had ever played a senior game of AFL footy. It's a one in whatever you want to call it. Because no He was the first American player to ever play in the AFL. American player had ever played a senior game of AFL footy. It's a one in whatever you want to call it. Because no one had ever done it. Mason Cox, redshirt senior from Ireland Village, Texas. He's only played six minutes all year. I went to Oklahoma State University. So I started out playing basketball when I was a freshman. I'd never picked up a basketball in my life, really. We played at the rec center, and there was a GA at the women's team, and she asked, would you be interested in helping out? Pretty much called the dream team, and they played against the women's team and practiced other teams and played against them. I was kind of like, yeah, cool. Like, what do I get out of it? And she goes, oh, we'll give you a free pair of shoes and maybe some kit. And I was like, sweet. The men's team <laughs> saw me training with the women's team. And one of the coaches said, who's that massive dude who's playing with the women's team? I'm like, why don't we have someone like that? I was in way over my head, barely could make a layup, and I was just a body bag. We got a call. <laughs> they wanted me to go to LA to try out for this thing called AFL, of Aussie Rules Football. And we both looked at each other and was, what the hell is that? And it comes up and it's like AFL's biggest hits. God. Yeah, after seeing that, I would have been like, uh, no, no, I'm not, I will not be coming there. Uh, how about I'm just going to finish college playing basketball, and then I'm going to find a different career to do. But after, if that's the first video that popped up, my lord, I would have been scared. God! I remember just kind of looking at him and laughing and going, is this really a sport? <laughs> I'd already accepted a six-figure paying job at ExxonMobil. So I went to He failed his six-figure job at ExxonMobil. That's so nice. It's really a sport? <laughs> I'd already accepted a six-figure paying job at ExxonMobil. So I went to the tryouts. Everyone that was there was interested in myself. It became pretty serious pretty quickly. That week, I threw the cap in the air, you know, I got the degree on stage, made my parents proud. A week later, I flew to Australia and my life changed. Oh my the whole God. concept of me coming to Australia was just to give me a showcase of what AFL was. Saw my first AFL game, sat next to a North Melbourne player. He explained to me, you know, that's six points. That's a point. Hits the post, it's worth a point. You know, they point the opposite direction whenever they really mean that way. And at the end of it, I remember he goes, okay, cool. So these are the teams that are interested in you. Here's the contracts. Um, let me know what you think. The international rookies are whopping 211 centimetres, the same height as Aaron Sanderlands. Looks quite exciting. God dang. I remember getting on the plane and I thought, what have I just done? I've just given up five years of hard work and thousands of dollars of education to go play a sport I've never heard of in a place I've never been with no friends or no family in, in Melbourne. I swear to God, it's hard. To do a six-figure... Six figure paying job you had, and yeah. But sometimes in life, you gotta follow your heart, you gotta take chances, do what you want. He was obviously interested in the game, obviously very intrigued, and wanted to play. And then you see followers started shooting up, but you start seeing the mean comments. He'll never play in the AFL, waste of time and money. Don't know why we signed the guy. You already start seeing all that, but. I like it. I like it. He jumped out there, took a leap of faith. To go play a sport I've never heard of in a place I've never been with no friends or no family in, in Melbourne. I stuck a footy in my hand. I thought it was uh, pretty much rugby ball. Like, I had no idea. The kangaroo skin and a Sharon is like the name of it. And I don't know. Like, it was all so foreign to me when I first started. He's kicking. His kicking was quite average. It was a crash course, essentially, of just what AFL was. Craig McRae and Anthony Rocker spent two and a half months with me and come around training the first day. It was sink or swim, really. We do this one Jeez. drill, and you get a handball off to the coach, and of course, Box is the one who you're handballing to. Go to handball to him. And I just remember looking at it, and I look back and going, 
okay, we've got a bit of work to do here. I like locked eyes for a second. <laughs> and I can just see in my mind, just what have we recruited? Players generally got a lot going on, but Mason's still trying yeah. to work out this new game, whether he fits, if he fits. Am I embarrassing myself? But at the end of the year, I got to the point where I was thinking, I might actually feel comfortable in an AFL game. Oh. Fox was the first one to tell me. He came out and said, look, you're going to debut. And that week was a massive week. It's Anzac Day, obviously. And it's one of the biggest games of the year. The crowd's 90,000 plus. The stadium is massive. It just leans over the top here, so God. that's challenging enough. I walked out there and I was ready to puke. I was that nervous. I was freaking <laughs> out, you know, I didn't know what to do. And I feel you on that face. I, that had to be scary. Had to be such a scary and nerve-wracking experience, but at the same time, there had to be a hint of excitement. I was ready to puke. I was that nervous. I was freaking out, you know, I didn't know what to do. And I was thinking, don't screw up, just whatever you do, don't screw up, don't screw up. More low trajectory kick. Oh, this could be a parenting. Oh, mate, he shot yeah. himself. And I can't imagine what it's like to try and drop the ball that extra foot and a half to get it onto your foot. My hands would have been like this, holding that ball. Mason Cox. And he rides it home. Yeah! Mason! He's going to get his first game. He's going to get the first goal on Anzac Day. Didn't happen. No, that didn't happen. Not that we needed to keep him grounded, but it was our job to keep him grounded. It's bloody hard. It's a big step from the VFL footy that he was playing to playing AFL footy. At the end of 17, I was playing VFL, you know, I'd gotten dropped a few times, we were playing small. He had to set himself a new goal of being one of the best forwards in the competition. Saturday night foot. Sheesh, bro, they, these fans, fans be ruthless, so that's just, you know, hey, they like, this man can't kick to save his life, this man is trying to get rid of him, drop him, like, we playing, we playing, we out there playing one man short when he on the field. Set himself a new goal of being one of the best forwards in the competition. Saturday night football at the Coliseum. Comes through Cox, drops what he should have taken. Oh, he couldn't work out the big fella. Hey. Mason Cox here, guys. This was just off the ball. I had the worst game of my career. I can probably say that pretty comfortably. I don't think I had a single mark the whole game and had maybe six touches or something and getting suspended for the next week. Probably a lower moment in my life, I'd say, of thinking, do I choose the right decision? Oh, everything. Look at this. Cox has been left alone. He plays on. He's gone. He's gone. Whatever Mason Cox can do as a permanent forward, I suspect Ben Rude can do better. I said, you know what? This is a last ditch effort to show him what you're worth, to show him you can do this. As bro, I just want to say I love his mental fortitude, bro, because when you read all that negative stuff and you see all that negative stuff, like, if you're seeing it, like, it starts to affect you. I feel like after a while. But at the same time, if you're playing bad, then, you know, I guess you understand it. It's like nobody's a harder critic on most people than themselves. Like, And so if he's playing bad, he's, he already knows he's playing terrible. He already knows he's sucking. He already knows his time is, is coming up short. Like, like, time is of the essence. He needs to, to start producing. You know that. Uh but when you do see it all over, everywhere, like, it does frustrate you. I said, you know what? This is a last ditch effort to show them what you're worth, to show them you can do this as a job. This is your career that you want to do for the rest of your life. What a beast this Tiger has become on and off the field. 22 consecutive wins at the MCG. It's hard to get your head around it, to be honest. We played Richmond twice and been overrun twice through the year. This could be the ah, biggest game that Mason Cox never gets a kick in. Prelim final MCG. Matt Stebby holds the ball aloft. Richmond take on Collingwood. It happened pretty early. Yeah! He was in. It was clunk, clunk, clunk. His hands are on, mate. They, they, they just stuck. Sets it up. Cox again. I cannot believe it. You've got to go back to the globe of the MCG for an American to dominate like this. Can he guide it through? Yes, he can. Three of the very best. The 211 centimetre Texan has just turned the MCG. Texan. Not only American, but Texan. I love it. I love 11 it. centimetre Texan. Just 
could you have pictured that four years, five years earlier with the guy that handballed over the top of my head? Um, definitely not. And Collingwood will go in to the 2018 Grand Final. A famous victory on the back of this man here. I don't believe in ceilings. I don't believe in people setting limitations on others. I think if you're motivated enough and you care enough or that determined to get to wherever you want to go, it's, it's possible. You can't write the script any better. Well, you could have. We could have won the grand final. <laughs> Imagine that story. Man, uh, you can't help but love it. The man never played AFL, never even knew what the sport was until he was about to graduate from college. To go over there, of course, in the beginning, you're going to suck. It's, it's how things are. And most things in the beginning, you're going to suck at it. But he stuck with it. He, he persisted. He kept training. He kept training till he got to the point where my guy in that last game was looking great. Second most uh, marks in AFL history in a finals game. Absolutely wild. Uh, you can't help but love that kind of story. That's all we got for this one. You guys got a favorite video you want to see me react to, you can uh, subscribe to Patreon or in the description section of your Google Form link. Hit the link, fill out your suggestion, send it to me. Want me to get to yours faster, fill out premium. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Ring notification bell, get a video a thumbs up so it gets suggested. I got social media, Patreon, all up top. If you want to subscribe to any of it, put all the links in the description. All you got to do is hit the link, follow me, talk to me. Love talking to you guys. You guys are the most incredible team on YouTube. It's your boy, d Out.